I'm trying to do right now is set my base timing. And I uh, had a great tip from a YouTube user named Ammo Power. AMO Power. Uh, great tips there. He says in the Ford Probe, it tells you to disconnect the uh, IAC connector. And since I'm pretty sure my IAC doesn't work, because if I unplug this, I get no change. So I'm also seeing a leak, coolant leak, coming out of here, right at the, the bottom of this tube here. Well, I didn't set it exactly back to where it was, but it's idling at about 1500, so it's still high idling. So this is just an example. According to Ammo Power, first thing that we're going to do is uh, disconnect your IAC. Now, it does not mention disconnecting the IAC in the Mazda manual, so I'd be interested to learn how that works with the Mazda. The next step is to remove the shorting bar. And this process is only for the 2.0 automatics that have EEC4. There will be a shorting bar attached to this lead. And you have to pry a clip on either side and then pull it out. Okay. Now when you do that, you're going to notice that you're going to get a fluctuating idle or some, some weird idle condition. Either your idle is going to raise up real high or go down low. Okay, now this fluctuating idle sounds very similar to what I was getting during my, uh, my clutch or uh, during my gear changes. So we're going to see if lowering this is going to help out. The next step after you remove your shorting bar, come over here to the distributor, crack this loose. shorting bar out it is art during the shorting process your idle is artificially going to be raised anyway so once you put this down and then insert your shorting bar back it's going to go back to a base idle condition and the entire idle will lower even farther if that makes any sense you'll see what I'm talking about tighten this up where it's at right here something going on with my timing. Right now I'm getting about 1100 which is where I was. But but as soon as I put this shorting bar back in it's going to drop even more. And there's a little notch on it so it's only going to go in one way. Now look where we're at. How about them apples? And just reconnect your IAC connector. Well, uh, that's down at base idle again. Almost. It's a little high, but it's certainly not 1100 or 1900 as it was uh, last week. We're getting there, one little step at a time. You're supposed to use the air adjust screw while the shorting bar is out. That's another thing that Ammo Power told me um, that I had completely wrong. Uh, so make sure if you're going to mess with the air adjust screw that you take out your shorting bar. So let's say that the shorting bar is out. And you come over here to your air adjust screw and you can raise or lower that. Clockwise is to lower it and anti-clockwise or counterclockwise is to raise the RPM. So you've got your distributor and your air adjust screw, your throttle, your throttle stop screw, and for the 93 and 94 you've got your idle sensor thing over there. I don't even know how that works. Um, not to mention your acceleration cable, which might have uh, some play in it. Uh, over years, cable stretch. So that's another thing to consider. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, technically, you should want to put a timing light on this in order to check. And as long as you can get from point A to point B to get a mechanic with a timing light to time that correctly, he can do all the fine-tune adjustments. So. Uh, that's what I recommend. The air adjust screw should only be used during the proper circumstances. You should not use it as a fix. It's just a band-aid. Now in my case, I had low idle when I had my automatic transmission and the torque converter was messed up. That set a low idle condition. And in order to fix that, I took that to the mechanic after the head rebuild and he properly timed it because I didn't have a timing light at the time. And he also adjusted my air adjust screw. And I saw him adjust that 
and he also used a shorting bar so he did the absolute proper factory procedure for doing that but now that i have a high idle i need to lower that using the air adjust screw and kind of back off some of the changes that he made now that i no longer have a low idle but a high idle and i'm currently in the middle of doing a fuel pressure testing video so i'm just taking some time out to do this one as well because in order to do a proper fuel pressure test you have to have your correct idle set since i have a high idle i need to take care of that first so both of these videos are probably going to be put out the same day and you can see why I think I have low fuel pressure. Okay, so now we got our idle. And our idle speed is about 1200. That needs to come down to about 750. All two liter automatics, including Ford Probe, Telstar, Protege, uh, MX-6 have an air adjust screw. I believe the V6 also has an air adjust screw, but I'm not a V6 kind of guy, so I can't really tell you. Now your air adjust screw is right here, right next to the throttle body. And it's just a regular screw. And once you get it in there, and you start turning, clockwise is to lower the RPM, and counterclockwise is to raise the RPM. So you just keep coming back over here and you keep checking it. For you, that might work. And that's how you adjust your air adjusting screw or AAS.